Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on reflection and mirrors. The topic of this video is light and sight. We want to know in what way is the reflection of light important to sight and what is meant by the term line of sight and how can the concept be used to determine the location of an image. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Vision, or how humans see, is a very complex topic, but lying at the foundation of the process of vision is a very simple truth that goes like this. In order to see anything, light from the thing must come to your eye. That is, without light, there can be no sight. As a thought experiment, I want you to think about this classroom. This classroom has in it windows and walls, a blackboard, student desks, a teacher desk, a projector, all sorts of objects that we see because the light reflects off them and comes to our eye. But I want you to think what would happen if we covered those windows with black construction paper so that no light could get in. Well, the room would look different. It would probably look like this. And then let's suppose that we could go to the doorway of the classroom and cover the doorway so that no light gets in there and do a better job of sealing light from getting through the, those windows. Now what would the classroom look like? Well, it would look like this. It would look like darkness. Darkness is the absence of light. And without light, there would be no sight. And without sight, you wouldn't see any of the objects in the room. That emphasizes the importance of light to sight. This brings up the distinction between luminous objects and illuminated objects. Luminous objects are objects that give off their own light. We see luminous objects because the light from the object comes directly to our eye. Examples of luminous objects could be a light bulb, or perhaps the screen you're watching this wonderful video on, or the sun. We see all these objects because they create their own light, and that light comes to our eyes, giving us the ability to see them. We contrast that with another type of object called an illuminated object. An illuminated object is an object upon which light shines, and we see illuminated objects because light shining on the object bounces off of it and comes to our eye. It's not because it creates its own light, it's because some luminous object creates light that shines on the illuminated object so that we can see it. Examples of illuminated objects would include a sheet of paper or a book or your clothing or another person. They don't create light. They bounce light from a, a luminous object to our eye. Another example is the moon. And the moon is an illuminated object, and we see it in the night sky because light from the sun, a luminous object, bounces off of it and comes to the eye of us earthlings. I'm going to give you a little experiment to do of looking at objects in this room. And when you look, I want you to pay attention to what your eyes are doing when you look at the object. So here we go. Let's begin by looking at the bed. What did your eyes do? Now look at the door. What did your eyes just do to look at the door? Now look at the window. Now look at the fireplace. The dresser to the left of the bed. And finally, look at the stool in front of the fireplace. Now, when you looked at these objects, you were exercising a simple truth that to see anything, you must look along a line at the thing. And when you do, light from that thing will come to your eye along your line of sight. The line of sight is what you have to do in order to see something. You have to point it at a particular object. You have to look along a line of sight to see anything. And then light comes along that line to your eye. There's a simple extension to this idea that if you want to see the image of an object in a mirror, which is what a good deal of this unit's going to be about, then you have to sight along a line at the image of the object, and when you do, light will come from the mirror to your eye as you're sighting at the image. And finally, there's a little follow-up corollary to this that's quite logical that goes like this, that the image of an object always lies along your line of sight as you're looking at it. So if you're seeing an image in a mirror, you know that the image lies along the line that you're looking at when you see it. The diagram above depicts many of the ideas that I just talked about. You see that there's an object, labeled object, an image, and a horizontal line which represents a mirror. And you'll notice the eye is looking along a line denoted by this red arrow and dashed back behind the mirror at where the image is located. To view an image in the mirror, you must sight along a line at the image. And when you do, light will travel from the mirror surface to your eye and we refer to this light ray, represented by the red arrowed line, as the reflected light ray. Now this light originates at the object location. So you'll notice the blue arrowed line heading towards the mirror from the object. That's a ray of light that approaches the mirror and, and reaches the mirror at the intersection of your line of sight with, as you sight, at the image. We call this the incident ray. Now there's likely multiple rays that are approaching the mirror from the object that hit the mirror, 
But to see this image from this eye location, you have to rely upon this single set of incident and reflected rays. We're going to do a thinking reflecting exercise. I'm going to give you a proposed pathway for light traveling from the object to mirror to eye, and you want to decide is it correct or not. In correct or incorrect, and then if incorrect, what's wrong with it? So here we go. Here's our first choice. Is this correct? Is this how light gets from object to mirror to eye? And the answer is no, certainly not. And thank you for getting that one right. It has to travel in a straight line. So how about this one? This looks better. Is this correct? Nope, that's not correct, because if you took the reflected ray, which represents the line of sight, and extended it backwards, it's not pointing at the image location. So that's not correct. How about this one? Nope, that's not correct either. For the same reason, the reflected ray represents where the eye is looking. And if we extended this backwards behind the mirror, this reflected ray would not intersect at the image location. So the eye is not looking along the line of sight at the image. How about this one? Looks better, but that's not it either. Even though the eye this time is looking at along a line of sight at the image, the light can't pass through the mirror. It has to bounce off the mirror, and this is showing the light passing through on the way to the mirror and the way back to the eye. So that's incorrect. How about this one? Yeah, that's it. The eye is sighting along a line extended backwards towards the image location. And when it does, a ray of light comes to the eye. And that light originates at the object location and travels towards the mirror, intersecting the mirror along that lo at that location where the line of sight intersects the mirror. You got it. It's at this time that I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like or tapping the bell to subscribe to the channel or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are two resources, each of which can be found in our website. I left links to both in the description section of this video. They're both tutorial pages, both make great follow-ups to this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. My name is Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.